Welcome back to Low Stress Math with Mrs. Bono. We are on Chapter 1 Exponents, page 22 in your packet, which is Independent Practice, Product Rule with Monomials. Now, it's your option, but I would strongly suggest turning off the video, taking a few deep breaths, and trying these problems. If you have a calculator, of course you can use it. You don't need it for all of these, but try the problems. Right, welcome back. So for the first four problems, you have to identify the coefficient, base, and exponent. And there is, of course, a line for each of those. Now be careful, because sometimes things are, you know, not what they appear to be. So this first one, the coefficient, make it a little bigger so people can see what you're doing there, Bono. All right. The coefficient is negative 6. The base is y, and the exponent is 3. Oh dear, my y looks like a 6. I did not extend my y. There's your tail, Bono. Okay. I wouldn't have noticed that if I didn't double check. It's always important to double check your work. All right. For number 2, you'll see that the coefficient is in parentheses. That means you're multiplying the entire fraction times the base. I'll explain more about those parentheses and fractions later, but if they're there, that means it's the whole fraction, 5 over 6, in parentheses, keep it that way. The base is m, and the exponent is 3. Number 3. Ha! Ah, now we're to it. Now we have the invisible coefficient. The coefficient, when you don't see a coefficient, is 1. Remember we talked about the rules of algebra and there was the distributive property, the commutative property, the associative property, and the property that this happens to be, the identity property. You can multiply 1 times any number, and the number doesn't change. That's why I can put a 1 as the coefficient, because I can multiply 1 times whatever c to the fourth power is, and it's not going to change. So I do have a coefficient of 1 because of the identity property. We're going to be using properties all year long, and I will try to remind you every time we use one. The base here is c, and the exponent is 4. All right. Ha. Now we have a coefficient of 7, and I'm going to try really hard to make my 7s not look like my 1s, because sometimes they get confusing. And I also have a base, a. Ah, but there does not appear to be an exponent. But there is. When you don't see the exponent, again, I'm going to use 1 because there's one a here, a to the first power. The exponent is one. All right. For the next part, numbers five to eight, we're gonna expand and simplify. Now we're gonna use a different property here. Up here, I used the identity property, but down here, because I have coefficients and I have bases that are variables, I'm going to have to use the commutative property and be able to move my numbers around. So to expand this first one, it's 9. And I have x times x. Because it's x squared, I use x as a factor two times. So here my coefficient is 2, and my base is x, again, used as a factor six times, so x times x times x times x times x times x, one, two, three, four, five, six x's. x used as a factor six times. So now I'm going to use that commutative property because I want to do nine times two. And because it's all multiplication, you can commute the numbers. You can move them around. When you're multiplying, 
doesn't matter what order you multiply in. Two times three is six, and three times two is six. It doesn't matter what order you put them in. And in this one, it doesn't matter that it's nine times two. It could be nine times x times x times two. But commutative property, I want to put them together. All right? And then I have the base x, but because I'm simplifying it, I just have to count the number of x's, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or I could say exponent plus exponent, two plus six, and get eight here. All right, I'm gonna finish it off and get 18 x to the eighth power. And I'm going to do the same thing for the next problem. I am going to expand it. But for this one, the base is a number. So I have 4 for the first base. I actually write that in blue. I have 4 to the fifth power, so I'm going to use 4 as a factor five times. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> oh, sneezes. Oh dear, I'm going to have to edit that out, huh? Oh, and my 4 doesn't look like a 4 either. 4. And now I have expand 4 squared. 4 times 4. So my base is 4. But in total, I have a lot of them. Here we go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Or I could just add the exponents 5 plus 2 and get seven. So four to the seventh power. All right. Do I have to solve that? No. I could, but I didn't ask me to. It says, use the product rule to simplify each expression. Remember, the first part of this product rule, I'm going to go back, I'm going to look at the product rule. It's just here on the page before. It says, separate the monomial, oh, that's multiplying. I, I have to go back actually two pages to get to the product rule. Uh, ta -da. Way back here. Come on, Bono. Where is the product rule? Here we go. I found it. It's on page 16. On the top. The product rule of exponents oh, is on the top of page 17. When the bases are the same. That's actually key. Because if I'm looking at these problems here, the bases are not the same. I have two bases that are A and the other base is B. So I have to put the A's together. So I have A. And darn it, look at that. There's no exponent here. But remember, no exponent, use a 1. So A, 1, plus here's A to the third, plus 3. And I have a separate base. I cannot combine bases. Do not do that. Bad. 3 plus 2. So I got to use the exponents that are on the b. b to the third, b squared, 3 plus 2. And I get a total on this first one, a to the fourth power, b to the fifth power. And you got to keep the base separated from a different base. You've got to keep the exponents with their appropriate bases. All right, let's try number eight. Oof, look at that. Thank goodness. Only one base, r. But now I'm going to add the exponents. Five plus four, and I get the base r. Base stays the same. Of course, it helps if everyone can see what you're doing. Base stays the same, but now I'm going to add 5 plus 4 and get r to the ninth power. All right, down here, oh, goodness gracious me, I have a bunch of bases, and I have, well, no, I don't have a bunch of bases. I have a bunch of coefficients. So let's see, what do I have there? Negative 6, negative 4, and 2. So I'm going to take all of my coefficients, and I'm going to use the commutative property, and I'm going to put those all first. Negative 6 times negative 4 times 2. Commutative property. Put 
the coefficient first. Now I only have the base y, but I have three separate exponents, 3 and 10 and 7. So 3 plus 10 plus 7. So multiply the coefficients. 6 times, six times 4 is 24. Negative 6 times negative 4 is still 24. Times 2 is 48. When you have an even number of exponents, sorry, even number of negatives, your answer is positive. All right, the next one, y. Keep the base, add the exponents. 3 plus 10 plus 7 is 20. So I end up with 48y to the 20th. You know what? I should box my answers. It makes it easier to find them on the page. There we go. The next one. Ah, I have a negative exponent. That's fine. You're allowed to have negative exponents. Just keep the base 2, and you're going to add negative 4 plus 8. Negative 4 plus 8. When the signs are different, subtract, keep the sign of the number with the larger exponent, or just grab a calculator. You can do that too. And you get 2 to the fourth power. All right. Ah, note. Which of the following is an irrational number? If you can't recall the definition of an irrational number, Google it. There's no reason not to look things up if you're not sure. So which of the following is irrational? So if you can change a number into a fraction, it's rational. And negative 1 half is already a fraction, so that's rational. The square root of 16 is 4. And I can make that a fraction 4 over 1. Ah, repeated 23s. For this one, I'm actually just going to grab my calculator and put that in. Decimal 23, 23, 23, 23, 23, 23. And I'll hit the double arrow key and enter, and I get 23 over 55. Well, oh, sorry, over 99. And that is rational, 23 over 99. The other thing about rational numbers is if, you can, if it's repeating or terminating, if it ends, it's a rational number. So that repeats. So I knew it was rational before I started. This one, however, oh goodness, if I grab a calculator and I do second square root of, what is that, 5, I get, ugh, it didn't do anything. It stayed 5, double arrows. Uh, yeah, that's not looking too good. This is not repeating, and it does not end. So that makes it irrational. Does not repeat, does not end, this one. So irrational, doesn't repeat, doesn't end, that's your rational. All right, the next page. <gasps> Look at this, it's a puzzle, I love puzzles. Here we go. How do you know a wedding is really emotional? Well, I don't know the answer to that, but it says simplify using properties of exponents. Okay, so here it's very obvious that my base is 2. And then I'm going to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 2 to the seventh power. And I'm going to come here on the bottom and find 2 to the seventh power. So that's letter C. All right, this one. This has a base of parentheses negative 3 because every single one of these is a negative 3. That means the base is in parentheses negative 3. And there's one, two, three, four, five of them. So negative three in parentheses to the fifth power. And that is somewhere. Where is that? Here it is. Negative three to the fifth power. That's going to be an H. All right. Ah, this one is so much better. I like this so much. Three. And then I don't have to write everything out. I just can add the exponents. Three plus two. And get three to the fifth power. So I like that. And that is positive 3 to the fifth power, which is down here, letter I. OK. Ah, I'm adding again. Keep the base 3. And I have to do 5 plus negative 3. 5 plus negative 3. 
that's a keep change change one, remember? So I could just subtract 5 minus 3 and get 2. Oh, darn it, I forgot the base. 3 to the second power. So I got to come down here, and that is letter S. All right, I'm just going it to, it doesn't say I have to do them in order, so I'm not going to. I'm just going to do this little section. So let me make it a little bit bigger so you can see what I'm doing. And I am going to, ah, see parentheses, keep it negative in parentheses, negative 2. And you're adding negative 2 plus negative 3. When the signs are the same, add and keep the sign, negative 2 to the negative fifth power. Wow. Where is that down here? Negative 2 to the negative fifth power. Do, 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 do. Here it is. That is going to be letter I. This one, keep the base 2. Add all these exponents, 4 plus 2 plus 3. I'm going to do it without even writing. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 2 to the ninth. Oh, you cheater bono, you didn't show your work. Uh, and you made it look like a 29. Good thing I write in different colors, huh? So I'm going to rewrite that. 4 plus 2 plus 3. Ha! And let's see, 2 to the ninth is down here somewhere. Up, oh, it's the very first one. That's going to be the letter T. Okay. Now I have this one. Keep the base 3. Then I'm going to add 0 plus 5 is 5 plus, oh, there's no exponent here. I'll put my 1 there and get 3 to the 6th power. 3 to the 6th power. Where are you? 3 to the 6th power. Up oh, there it is, letter K. Don't worry, I'll show you in a second. This has two separate bases. I have a base with a 2 and a base of 3. 3 plus 4, 2 to the 7th. And that one stays 3 to the 4th power. You cannot combine those bases. They are not alike. So there's going to be two different bases there. And that is letter E, the third box. Okay. Down here. Keep the base in parentheses, 2 thirds. And 4 plus negative 5 is negative 1. And where is that? Oh. Two-thirds to the negative one. Here it is. Two-thirds to the negative one is letter N. Okay. Now I'm keeping the same base, two-thirds, still in parentheses. Two plus negative three is negative one plus positive three is two. So I have two-thirds squared. Where is that two-thirds squared? Oh, no, I've made a horrible mistake. Look what I did. This is 2 thirds, and that's 3 over 2. Oh, you can't do that, Bono. Get rid of that mistake that you made. So I'm going to just grab my handy-dandy whiteout because, you know, I should know better than to be making mistakes like that at this point in the game. Ah, Bono, Bono, Bono. It's okay to make boo-boos. Just check yourself. So that is actually going to be 2 thirds to the 2 plus 3, fifth power. And this one is going to be 3 over 2. And that is to the negative third power. They have two different exponents because they're actually two different bases. And that is right down here. That is letter E. Ah, you have to check things. You always have to check things. OK, let's do these six really quick. Keep the base negative 2 in parentheses. 3 plus 4 is 7. Hey, keep the base. 3, negative 4 plus negative 2 is negative 6. Oh, let's come down here and put those letters in, Bone. Oh, yeah. Negative 2 to the seventh power is E. 3 to the negative 6 power is I. And now I just have a few more to do. I'm almost there. OK. Keep the base 3. Negative 2 plus 3 is 1. 1 minus 4 is negative 3. 
And so I need 3 to the negative 3. Where is that? Oh, it's way over here. R. Keep the base 2. And now I need glasses because I can't see those numbers. I don't know about you, but they're a little blurry to me. I actually have another copy of this paper with better numbers on it. So I'm going to get it from here. 9 minus 4 is 5. 5 minus 5 is 0. So this is going to be 9 minus 4 minus 5, and I get 2 to the 0 power. Sorry about the blurries. 2 to the 0 power, that is down here, letter T. Ooh, I'm almost done. Two more. Here we go. There's two separate bases again. This one is 2, and I have 3 minus 5, negative 2. And this base is 3, negative 3 plus 2. Let's see, negative 3 plus 2. That's negative 1. So I have 2 to the negative second power and 3 to the negative first power, which is over here. So that's going to be letter S. Yep. And the last one. 2 and 2. So 2 to the fourth, uh, right, that's right. 2 to the fourth power minus 3 is 2 to the first. And 3, negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1, 2 to the first, and negative one, and 3 to the negative 1 down here is letter A. The cake is in the tigers. What? 